What's going on, nomads, pod people, and strangers everywhere across the internet? Welcome back to Nomadic Opinions. And let's get serious for a moment, you guys. We all know that suicide isn't a very fun or enjoyable topic to make. It makes a lot of us uncomfortable, makes a lot of us feel very vulnerable and weak to a lot of things that we hide very deep down inside of ourselves. And it takes us to like a very dark place that we're not that sure of, that kind of pushes us away from society and a lot of social norms that kind of makes us shut out all sorts of realities to just make that seem like it doesn't exist, even though it heralds back to us making terrible choices or losing those that have gone through suicide. It is not a fun or or enjoyable or really any sort of topic that a lot of us feel comfortable discussing or exploring any further since it does make us feel very unnerved and very unsettled in its appeal well said so from just that whole tirade for just a full minute straight how come anything in the entertainment industry does suicide in a very wrong way <laughs> Look, guys, I get it. When it comes to stuff in the media, you have to do stuff of shock value. Suicide scenes, rape scenes, stuff of murder. A lot of things you need to do to sell a story. As a writer, as a director, and as a showrunner slash producer, I understand that on four different fronts. Because shock value does kind of sell certain characters if done with good care and tact and well-produced writing. It's just a shame that for a lot of the things that I see about suicide in anything fictional, a lot of those connotations are really kind of shitty and very much unnecessary. I mean, sure, you have certain things that do it right, but I'm gonna give you guys at least two examples that kind of bring out this Nomadic Opinions episode to its whole forward front thinking. The first, I'm going to actually go into a topic I don't really talk about that often, of the comic book era. Something I don't cover because I don't read comics anymore, guys. I get all my comic facts from Atop the Fourth Wall, hosted by Linkara, aka Louis Lovehaug. Where the example, for example one, is from a comic book from the 90s of Youngblood number 10, The Death of Chapel. The reason I'm bringing that as example one for suicide done wrong is because the connotations for the suicide, it's because Chapel finds one of my favorite anti-heroes of all time of Spawn after he's brought back from the dead because he was wrongfully murdered and because he went to hell for all the murders that he did commit as a mercenary, he's then made a deal with one of the lords of the underworld of Malbogio to then be a servant for hell and being observed by the Violator. Everyone knows that full-blown backstory thanks to the animated series and that shitty movie from the 90s and early 2000s if you want to be technical, but still. So, from all that sort of stuff that Chapel sees about Spawn, since he's from a Rob Liefeld sort of connection, but actually worked, Chapel's kind of like, well, you see, I have AIDS because I fucked anything that moved. I'm a detestable human being, but if I kill if you kill me if i kill myself maybe if i go to hell i can come back as an immortal person with everything purged from me and i can kill more with indiscretion and more horrible intent it will be glorious it'll be like the non-stop murder bone i've been looking for my whole life and you're just seeing this whole thing go down even trying to vividly show the suicide Great job, by the way, comic book industry, of Chapel blowing his brains out when Spawn won't do it. And you're just sitting there either reading the book or watching people review the comic book, and you're just like, why was this a thing? Like, sure, back when AIDS was full-blown mysterious thing of this kills people and we have no idea how to treat AIDS, a lot of people were scared of it, and it was a very 
hot topic. A lot of people thought that it was the ultimate death sentence, even though right now it's more or less you just can't have sex with anyone unless they also have AIDS, but whatever. So, in that connotation for Chapel to kill himself to get rid of his AIDS because he wants to kill more and fuck more to then do all that stuff, that defeats the purpose of the levity about what suicide is, as well as what people that go through the AIDS scare went through. When you make a detestable character, when you're trying to do something with suicide, it doesn't make you feel anything except very angry emotions. When you're just looking at those panels, or watching it on films, or on television, or listening it to it on the radio, it's not something that you can just, oh, I get that, I would totally do that. It's not a joke. Suicide is a serious topic, and I figured that a lot of people would know this even back in the 90s slash early 2000s. And yet, that leads into example number two, which is a very familiar topic on this channel, which is 13 Reasons Why. Look, guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I hate 13 Reasons Why more than any other thing I could possibly review. Even when I re-review the shit, I will still hate 13 Reasons Why and still put it on my top 10 most hated TV shows of all time, coming out next year, by the way. But there are many different reasons why I hate 13 Reasons Why that I'm gonna go into for why it is a terrible example of suicide in media. First thing, you learn this very quickly when you're trying to be in the entertainment industry. When it's on the small screen, not the silver screen, mind you, the small screen. There are limitations, whether it's a streaming platform or for something that is on a global network. You are not to, and I repeat, not to vividly show anything of an act that is suicide or enacting stuff that can do so because you have no idea if that's an actual trigger for those that would want to do that while watching the series. Why am I bringing that up? Because they wanted to vividly show, probably from prosthetics so it doesn't actually hurt the actor's skin, of actually showing how deep to cut into the skin to show what it means to slice open your wrist as if it's a good commentary on the act of suicide. When there are people that were or are cut cutters watching the show, just being like, so that's what I need to do if I want to end it all. Yeah, that's the perfect method to go about it. Sure, you can put like all those warning labels and whatnot that you want to put on the TV show, but here's a problem with that warning label that you idiots still don't understand in the entertainment industry. Barely any single parent or individual takes those things seriously because you use that on so many things in our everyday lives for everything in the media, everything on websites, on television shows, on movies, that we take those as jokes. The only way to take it seriously where you don't want people to see it is to not show the action as it is. There are limits to what you should do as a medium, and I respect when people say, don't do this scene, don't do that scene. But when you're on a bigger platform like this, you should take that as seriously as undiscovered or still learning talent, you dumbasses. Second thing is that stupid tape thing that Hannah Baker did throughout the whole series as like her whole revenge from the grave thing. See what I mean about detestable characters from Chapel going back to Hannah Baker? At least with Chapel, from what I could tell from all the Youngblood reviews I saw from Linkara, 
Chapel was detestable because Rob Liefeld is a terrible person to make anything of artwork, along with having a company that has terrible writing for all of their characters. Even having a young child made from rocks, supposedly being in a sexual relationship with a woman older than him. Thanks, comic book industry! But with Hannah Baker, it's like, oh, well, I guess since I'm about to end it all, I should make all these tapes exposing everybody like a shady bitch because it's not like it would be a little bit more productive to confront everything by first going to the police about my rape now that I've consoled myself to be a stronger individual to stand up, get that rape kit used to expose the person that should rightfully go to prison. I should definitely try to confront everyone that did me wrong in that final hurrah so I can get a clear conscience. No, it's it's the more selfish route of let me make all these tapes to guilt trip everyone from the grave to make myself feel better. And I know a lot of people are kind of going to be glaring at me just like, why are you harping on this so vividly? Why are you harping on this so much? You're not a suicide victim. You're not a rape victim. There's no possible way you can understand as a male in any industry because it's a woman. No male ever gets raped or molested or has thoughts about suicide or cutting themselves or get any sort of emotional sort of thing like that. Oh, here go hell come. Which brings me to point three from this whole thing from just 13 Reasons Why and Youngblood number 10 as a tying in factor to why this is a huge topic for me, guys. I'm both a person that tried to commit suicide numerous times thanks to both bipolar depression, lots of things going off in the background from a personal life that my family still has no idea about, and for repressed memories of being raped. Yeah, I know what it's like to be sexually taken advantage of in many different ways. I was sold off to people while actually asleep by someone I trusted to be a sex toy for people while I was unconscious. I have no idea who they were. I don't want to know how many there were, but I know it was a lot. There were people that misused me when I was either blindfolded in open areas or trying to just do stuff when I wasn't even looking to make it their whole gratification thing. I used to also be known to be a secret cutter even during my two engagements and my previous marriage. I understand what it means to go through that stuff and still fight that fight. It's not an easy road, even when you bounce back to the whole thing of not wanting to commit suicide anymore, but still trying to find that whole balance of things to live for, things to strive for, a new ba a balance of strength and encouragement. It's not a one and done deal where as soon as people say something, you bounce back like that. And it's not a strength matter. It's a matter of allowing yourself to finally move forward, even if it takes you years or months or days, depending on how big your resilience is to want to live. If that is the case from just myself as an individual, not just counting myself, but from any other person I've talked to that have tried to commit suicide, were rape victims, and wanted to do even more things, why hasn't the entertainment industry done a better job to depict that there are people that can be your allies to save you from that instead of making it paint a picture of everything is against you? Nothing is ever as dark as the media tells you. Nothing is as twisted or as vile as people try to direct and produce and write for you. The thing that makes me hate this subject when it comes to many people that don't understand it is the fact that they try to grind salt into many people's wounds to make you feel something that they have no real idea how it should be, why it is such a hot button discussion, why so many people feel unnerved, why they feel so torn up about this. And yet they try to paint it as if you're always alone until after you're dead. 
until after you've done all this stuff to try and fix the mistakes after people fucked you up before you committed suicide. It's never that dry and done. There are people that help. There are counselors that by law do their fucking job and if they sense a deadly intent to one's own being, they either call up services to come to your house or put you into a psychological ward or go to a counselor to work out your issues. There are no people that just blatantly want to see you get torn down from your biggest platform down to the ground to commit suicide point blank. It's never that cut and dry and it makes me disgusted every single fucking moment I see that in anything. I hear it from a comic book, I see it on TV, I watch it on a big screen, I watch it on a YouTube video, because it's never that simple, it's never that cut and dry, I don't know how many times I need to say this before it's drilled into people's heads, it's not that hard to get suicide right, to make sure people know that they're not alone. You can make it so people feel bad, sure. You can make it so people understand suicide is a bad thing, because it is. But to blatantly put something that is without merit, without care, without any sort of real research into the topics about what actually leads into suicides. Are there people that actually go to people's corners when they notice th something's wrong? Do they see all the social cues? Do counselors do their fucking job? Because... If I may point this out to all of you, there are people that do this small thing called research. They do their whole time away from the script going like, let me look up what happens to people, contact suicide survivors, people that have known people from suicide, look up rape victims, look up all these things about what teenagers or adults really do. Let me look into people that have really suffered through AIDS. Let me look up the people that have known relatives that have committed suicide to AIDS. Let me do all of this research so that I don't get the topic wrong. So I can get everything done properly. And yet, here we are today with this one heavy topic that I've been sitting on quietly for damn near 13 years. 13 years. If you guys want to bitch and moan about all this sort of stuff about how one person can just say all this stuff and not know what they're talking about, then you guys need to honestly do some research or take a small little introspection into your own being, your own household, your own group of friends. Because I will guarantee you, they will automatically be straight up going dead into your face and letting you know that what you might understand, you don't even know a goddamn thing. You're not even scratching the fucking surface. But hey, this is just my opinion.